Moment. We are just getting in uh, some video of these U.S. strikes in Syria, uh, along with this statement from the Pentagon spokesman, Captain Jeff Davis, regarding this strike. And we're going to go ahead and play this video for you as I read from this statement. There you see uh, the attack which was launched at the command of President Trump, uh, who authorized this strike on Syria in retaliation for that chemical attack that we saw earlier in the week. This statement from Captain Jeff Davis uh, talks about the strike being conducted using Tomahawk land attack missiles from the destroyers USS Porter and USS Ross in the Eastern Mediterranean Sea. A total of 59 uh, uh, missiles targeted aircraft, hardened aircraft shelters, petroleum and logistical storage, ammunition supply bunkers, air defense systems, and radars. Now, this is the statement uh, talking about possible collateral damage here. As always, the U.S. took extraordinary measures to avoid civilian casualties and to comply with the law of armed conflict. Every precaution was taken to execute this strike with minimal risk to personnel at the airfield. Uh, this statement goes on to talk about Russian forces were notified in advance of the strike using the established deconfliction line. U.S. military planners took precautions to minimize risk to Russian or Syrian Syrian personnel located at the airfield. We are assessing the results of the strike. Initial indications are that this strike has severely damaged or destroyed Syrian aircraft and support infrastructure and equipment at the Sharat airfield, reducing the Syrian government's ability to deliver chemical weapons. The use of chemical weapons against innocent people will not be tolerated. Uh, Charles, let me go to you. Uh, it appears, as we are hearing from the Pentagon, steps were taken to mitigate uh, casualties, civilian casualties, as well as uh, Russian or Syrian casualties as well. However, if in fact, say, Russian forces may have been killed as part of this uh, airstrike on this airfield, what would that potentially do in terms of escalating this conflict? Well, I think if, 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 a Ru if Russian forces were killed, I think it would certainly force Moscow to consider having to respond in some kind of aggressive way. But I think that's precisely why all kinds of various attempts will have been made on the U.S. side to have prevented that kind of a scenario from taking place. I mean, we do know in open source information that um, this specific air base has housed uh, Russian helicopters almost ever since uh, Russia intervened in Syria. Um, I don't know if those helicopters were still there when the strikes took place, but certainly I think the Department of Defense has made clear that the, uh, the cruise missile strikes tonight very specifically did not target a specific area of the base where Russians were known to have operated. But nevertheless, it's pretty clear, and it's been consistently the case for a long time now, that this has been a base shared between um, the Russian military and the Syrian military. Um, I don't expect any Russians have been killed in this strike. Um, but as I say, if they have, then I think it would force Moscow to, to, to respond in some kind of an aggressive fashion, although I agree with some earlier guests who made it very clear that, uh, it, 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 simply put, Russia would be acting very stupidly and very short-sightedly if it acted directly against the United States. Uh, when, when, when they come up and match up against each other, I don't think the Russians would come out on top.